Okay, now don't get all excited. We're just showing off here a little bit. Mainly just chatting with you guys. Give you give us give some folks a chance to pile in and give us a chance to say hello and make sure we can be heard. And get rid of that. Like all that, just housekeeping stuff. Housekeeping stuff. Which is already a problem. Yeah, right. What in the world? Already it's a problem. I'm, I'm trying to do my screens a little differently. And um, they're running into each other here. So this is why I come on a little early. Because it takes my brain a while to wrap around what I'm doing. Um, that's interesting. I'm going to do this. Huh. There it is. Okay. Somebody throw my heart out. I think that is so cute. That is moderator. Okay, we're trying to get our mods caught up here. Joe West. Hey, Sylvia. Nice to see you, Sylvia. I'll give you a wrench. Okay. I I'm not going to answer questions right now because we're, we're a little ahead. But I do want to give people a chance to uh, to say hello. I want to catch up with new folks and make sure they get wrenches. Gary Stein. Hello, Gary. First time you watch live. First time we've had you here. Relax with fish. Need to get a wrench to you. Somebody asked earlier what the wrenches are for. Uh, they're they're a sign that you're a part of the group. You're just in in the club. Probable clause, cause clause. Oh, have I kept African jewels? I certainly have. Gary, I think we've got you. No, it didn't. No, it didn't. There we go. Okay. Got all these wrenches passed out. What else? I'll, I'll try to go back and pick up uh, on your questions. I want to try to get... Um, can you all hear me? I mean, are we coming through? <laughs> New here, binge watch my whole channel. Now, Lazar, 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 you binge watch my whole channel today. You binge watch the whole day. It would take you... Let me see. I figured it out once. I have approximately 500 at between one and two hour live streams. So that's about 600 hours of live streams. Plus I have another thousand videos uh, at 15, 10 minutes a piece. That's 100 hours. I don't know what it is. That's 10,000 minutes. How many hours is that? 600 hours? Nah, not that many. I don't know. Anyway, it would take you... Uh, I probably have close to 1,000 hours watch time in, in videos. So you weren't watching... You didn't watch them all. <laughs> I hope you caught the... the 
hope you caught the last 20 or 25 because uh, those are some of the better ones. I'll start, yes, hello, Erie. Nice to see you. Delighted to have you here. Oscar Jungle, Vinokski. Ixvatashi, happy to have you more. You'd like to know more about a healthy aquarium. The new video is we need, uh, I need to get into this. We've had a bit of a squabble over this in our, uh, uh, our, on our team. I need more light. Maybe I need to get into the light. I can make it brighter, I think. Is that? You'd be amazed how much light I got on me. <laughs> Is that better? Michelle Marriott needs a wrench. The lady who spoke with on the phone who was a bridge tender. Oh my word. Oh my word. Interested in dropping some local tropical aquarium fish in Venice. Boy, I tell you, I need to have a collector now in Venice. I got two guys who both cracked out on me. Um, th there is an awful lot to catch. Probably the prize is pygmy sunfish, and we can get into that. Mattis Factory. Oh dear. So you're going to slowly leaking out through the silicone. I'll suggest you repair that, sir. Because if you don't, that slowly will become a deluge. And you don't want that. What size tank are we talking about? 40 breeder. Yeah, not a lot of pressure. I'll tell you what you can do that works and 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 that'll help doing a father fish tank it's an old trick that an old timer taught me about how to fix a tiny leak in a tank get a handful of dirt preferably clay drop it down right where the leak is and stir it a little bit right there just kind of use your fingers and and sort of try to press it in, the dirt will get into the seepage and block it. It works a lot of the time. It ain't 100%, but it does work. If it's a tiny little leak, not a spring, just a, 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 a kind of a sweat, if you will, that, that can stop it. Should I put dead bugs in the res resurrection jar? Yeah, not a lot of them. You can do some, sure. That That's a good way to feed stuff. Gary is moderating himself first. Good job, Gary. That's what we all need to be doing. And that's why we are all moderators. So we can moderate ourselves. Actually, it puts us all on our best behavior. Because if anybody acts out, it's like a quarter of a second and they're gone. Everybody's ready to leap at the least little malediction, the least little discrepancy. Uh, uh, what, what other word do I want to use? Ethical conundrum, whatever, vulgarity. KS Preeper, hello, hello. I have flex seal tip on, tape on it to stop. Tell that, but, well, that's on the outside is the problem. I mean, it could work, but you want to try to get something on the inside. Did I get the message about cattails from Roxy? Yeah, I think I did, and I think I really didn't understand it. Um, you want to put cattails in your tank. Good idea. The problem is cattails will, in a matter of a year, you'll have nothing in your tank but cattails wall to wall. They're, they're extremely aggressive plants, and they will absolutely take over. Moderating, right. 
Right, Erie, got it. We figured it out. Nice job. William, hello, hope all is well. You said on day two to add a few fish. Just did it. Good job. Can Mr. East Nails transmit fish wasting disease to a new fish tank? Oh, <laughs> fish wasting disease. Well, first of all, I don't know what that is. I mean, it, it, any, one, any one of a thousand bacteria could cause fish to waste away. And can snails transport it? Well, that's not the issue. The issue is, do you have enough biodiversity in your tank to control it if it does get in there? Because that's really what you need to do. You need to have a broad enough biodiversity so that whatever kind of pathogens come into your tank, somebody is on the prowl for them, and they're going to go after them. That's the nature of nature. Nature controls its members, if you will, uh, keeping them under control by creating a balance. And it ain't always a friendly, loving, gentle, patted on the head kind of balance. Sometimes it's, I eat you, that kind of balance. But balance is balance. Right guy outdoors, chatterbox. Hello, hello. You're listening to you. It's 5.54 in the morning. Mercy. Bless you, chatterbox. Where are you at 5.54 in the morning? I'll see. He's an all see. Passions of paper needs a wrench. Add as moderator. And it says, I've always dreamed of, and now I lost it. Huh. We got so much going on in here so fast. I, phew. wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, here it is. Dreamt of a plant, planted tank. People make it so complicated. Father Fish says, do this, do that, panda. That's it, right? There ain't nothing to it. It's not like it's complicated. Immediately started a 10 gallon, which is contagious. Now have a better than the 75. All right. All planted, all Father Fish. I'd fill my house if my hubby would let me. Just do it. Just do it, passions of paper. Just fill the house with tanks. I was looking at a bureau today in my bedroom. I took a nap this afternoon, so I would be relatively refreshed. And I, boy, I thought, boy, that's a perfect place for a fish tank. And I've got a, about a 50 in storage, and I'd love to be able to get a couple of big fish. So I'm thinking that's what I'm going to do. Chris Dodson, hello, hello. You are now, you are now whatever color they are. Blue. Blue he is. Blue. Blue, blue. Chris Dodson. But I need a filter for water flow. Well, you know, you need a little bit. Uh, particularly in a new tank. Um, the more plants you get, the less water flow you need because the plants kind of take over and do that. But in a relatively new tank, you need some water flow to make sure there are no dead spaces and to kind of keep everything moving, <laughs> as it were. Animal Kingdom home. How do I get rid of limpets? I know they're beneficial, but they take over the aquarium glass at night. Do you look at your tank at night? I mean, what's the problem here? Limpets. Here's the thing about a limpet is a snail, by the way. Uh, it's um, it's a snail that has its entire shell like, if I lost, uh-oh, what happened? What? Oh, boy. Camera unplugged. It ain't unplugged. It's turned off. 
I may have to give up on this silly thing. This camera goes off all by itself. Lord. Now I go back now I've got to go back and fix it. Hmm. Why does it do this? Video, camera. Oh, huh. it ain't coming on. Should be on. Honestly. I may give up on using my... This is my brand new $1,000 camera I've got here. And the silly thing ain't working. I may just have to dig out my regular camera. I'm not going to fool with this. I don't know why it's doing it. Thousand dollar camera and it turns itself off. It won't turn itself back on what's worth. Irritating is the word. Irritating. Let's see if I can get something hooked up here. I don't know what I'm going to unplug. Probably the light. What was that? The camera. Good. That's a good one. There you go, fault. Camera two, two, OBS. Huh. Wow. Um, I guess I need to go out and come back in. I don't know what I need to do here. Let me do it. Hey. Now I got too much light, don't I?
two rooms here. Now, Oh, Lord, now I'm not going to be able to read. <laughs> I need to put it up here. Now I can get this somewhere else. I think that's as good as it gets, guys. How's the lighting? Not too bad. All right, we're going to live with that. Irritating. All right, passions of paper. We did that. Thanks for the hearts, whoever's doing that. I need to sit forward. Scott Stankovich. You can containerize cattails. Yeah, that's true. You can put them in a little, a little bucket or something. Dash drones leave nature to fix itself. That's kind of where that's at. Can I put any leaves in my new deep substrate? You betcha. Put just any leaves. Yeah, we're gonna be doing. We're we're working on the the uh, th that leaf module now. Try to get it together so we can publish it. It's going to be, um, I don't even think it'll be another month. It's going to be pretty quick. We'll be, get it at, be able to get it out. Let me get a little there. That makes me look more alive. <laughs> um, so I can do this without wrecking everything. Get the wire out of the way. Technicolor. Technicolor. That's a whale bone, by the way. A whale. I think it's a whale. It might be a, a might be a norwal, actually. Could be an ancient porpoise. It's a fossil. Um, and I think it's a whale. Vertebrae. It's pretty heavy. But it's the size that counts. Keep that blood pressure low, Paul says. Yeah, I'm doing all right, actually. Um, I'm down 23 pounds on my new carnivore food plan. It's not a diet. It's a food plan. There is no hunger involved in this at all. I eat neat, 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 neat until I'm not hungry anymore. And then I stop eating. And now when I, when I got hungry, I eat again. And I eat and eat and eat and eat. And I've been doing this for three weeks. I do dairy, eggs. I don't drink milk, but I do a lot of butter. Some cheese. Any kind of meat. A lot of seafood. I eat a lot of seafood. Beef. I don't much like pork. Uh, so I don't have much pork, except for bacon. I do like bacon, and I do eat bacon. 
Anyway, and I eat as much of that as I want. I have as much fat as I want. But it's a diet of exclusion. I exclude all vegetables, all fruits, all carbohydrates, all sugars of all types. No desserts. No sugary desserts, at least. So that's like everything I love. It's gone away. But meat tastes pretty good when you're hungry. And this is the key. You eat until it doesn't taste good anymore. And then you're full. <laughs> and then when you get hungry, meat tastes pretty good. So you eat it. And it's like this yo-yo thing. Oh, I eat it because I like it because I'm tired of eating it. Because I don't eat it anymore. Until I get hungry and then I eat it because I like it. Because I'm hungry until I don't eat anymore. And it goes back and forth and you lose weight. Like I said, I've lost 21 pounds. Honestly, 21 pounds in um, about 21, 23 pounds actually in 21 days. I got another 25 to go to hit my goal. I was at 250 when I started. I'm going to be at 200 when I hit my goal. And we'll decide at that point where to go from there. But somebody asked me today if I was going to stay on it when I hit my goal. And I said, well, here's the thing. I'm going to be 83 in about a month. A month and a half. At, at that age, if I go back and put that weight back on, what in the world have I gained? I got a limited number of years left. That's why I'm doing it, to try to keep myself alive a little longer. So why would I go off of it? I said, no, it's a life commitment. I'm into it for life now. Never will eat another dessert. Somebody gave me a piece of birthday cake. Oh, it was wonderful. I did not taste it. Did not even taste it. Taste it. Brought it home and tossed it. Even the feral cats didn't want it. Anyway, relax with fish. Ta-da, ta-da, 83 years young, right. Keep it up. Well, if I keep doing it, I'll be all right. <laughs> Being lean as you age helps a lot. Yeah, and that's the problem. I was getting so exhausted just lugging all this flesh around that I didn't think I was going to make it much longer. So if I can get it all off, I should be able to walk more, build some energy up, get some muscle, and be able to hang around and beat you guys over the head for the next five to ten years minimum. Ta-ha. Atkins, hello, hello. Have I tried drinking tank water? Um, no, but I tell you, I had to give up coffee. Because coffee was the worst diuretic I've ever had in my life. Oh, God, it was awful. <laughs> so no more coffee. Um, and I tell you, what's funny about that is that I was enjoying coffee kind of less and less. So, I don't really miss it. Did I ever smoke? I smoked, how long? For 15 to 20 years, until I was about 40. How old was I? No, wasn't that old. How old was I? I quit in Mexico City. That was in 75. And I started in 60, 59, 60. So I smoked for 15, 16 years. Quit that a long time ago. Specific kind of dirt I should use when I start my tank, says Chris. Chris, what you need to do is watch one, uh, one at least one of the hundred videos I've done on all of the various soils that are involved 
in creating a substrate. It's more complicated than a specific kind of dirt. There are three or four different soils that need to be mixed together, plus the supplement package. So you, you need to research this a little bit. I get these questions all the time from people saying, um, is it okay if I put two inches of sand on top of my four inches of dirt? I actually got this one today. And I said, what? I don't think I used the word idiot. I used the word insane. What insane person told you to put four inches of dirt in your tank? That's what I said. Watch some videos. That's what they're there for. Don't expect me to sit here and lecture for an hour teaching you how to do something that I've already got on tape. And it's there. It's available. It's open. Anybody can access it. Do a little research. Do some work yourself. Don't expect somebody to spit in your ear and give you every bit of knowledge you'll need to be able to do whatever you want to do. Be responsible for learning, for teaching yourself, for using the resources that are available to learn. It takes time and effort to do that. I realize, and I realize that not everybody wants to spend time and effort learning. But too bad. That's what is required. Time and effort. I have put an enormous amount of time and effort into making more than a thousand videos. And I did that in order to, and, and every single one of those videos was intentional and deliberate and an attempt to communicate something specific that I felt was important. So please use it. I'm, I'm not, I, I have determined my answer from now on with these kinds of questions is watch some videos. That's what they're there for. Watch some videos. The people who watch the videos aren't trying to get a hundred hour education in 60 seconds because it can't be done. Spring water. Here's Monique asking about spring water. It's another perfect example of what I'm talking about. I have probably a hundred videos on water, different kinds of water, the difference between spring water, RO water, salt water, acid water, hard water. Watch some videos. Learn, if you learn it, then me giving you an answer, yes or no, that really doesn't teach you anything at all. It's, it's worthless information. Don't seek out worthless information. Learn. That's why we're doing a research project. We've got two, three people working virtually full time, learning all of the research, studying all of the research. They put in a thousand hours or more to date on a couple of very specific things, on leaves, the importance and effect of leaves in, in a fish tank, of the micro and macro fauna, and of the substrate, the soil. It will be the result of thousands of hours of work. If you read it, you will be edified. You will learn and you will grow and your understanding. But if you just ask questions with quick answers, 
and then you try to do something with that, I guarantee you will fail. That's why this fella today put four inches of dirt in his fish tank. Because he heard putting dirt in the tank was a really cool thing to do. So he's putting dirt in his tank. Never mind how much, what kind, how to do it, when to do it, where to do it. Never mind any of the details. Just dig some dirt and start the tank. You need to understand. You need to learn. You need to grow in understanding. And that will make you an intelligent, informed person. Be an intelligent, informed person. Don't ask somebody, should I do this or should I do that? Figure it out for yourself. All of the, this computer is an astounding tool. When I was a young man, I didn't have anything to like like this. If I had a question about something, I had to go physically take myself to a library, get into the stacks, find a book that had something to do with it, go through the card catalog to find what book covered that topic, and then read it, and they'll go back to the card catalog, find another book, Dig that off the shelves and read that. Talk about time consuming. That was time consuming. I can do that now in a minute. In a minute. It's astounding. The, the, the tool that is available to us today for learning, for education, is so profound and it astounds me how many people will not use it. They would rather ask some twit a question and get a half-baked answer and run with it. And when it fails, say, you're wrong, it's your fault. No, it's your fault for not studying, not researching, not learning how to do it yourself. That's your job. Your job is to learn. To grow in understanding. Well, that was a nice rant. How many did we lose? 90 or 100. <laughs> Thanks for sticking with me through that. i got to make a video out of that. Because I'll tell you frankly, I'm, I'm up to here with it. I'm up to here with people asking questions that they can find the answers to very easily. And I don't want to do that anymore. It's a waste of time for me to do that. Because whatever answer I give is of no value. It doesn't give you the knowledge and the understanding. It simply tells you what my opinion is of something. It doesn't tell you why I think that way, what my experience has been. And if I go into all that, well, that's what I've done on my videos. So watch the videos and you will learn. I think what I might do, because I really don't want to embarrass anybody here. And I'm sorry if I can. I didn't mean to come down on Monique or anybody else. I just, I've got to get this off my chest and I've got to deal with it. And I think what I'm going to do from now on, when I get those kinds of questions, I'm going to ignore them. Rather than make a deal out of it, rather than embarrass somebody, I'll just ignore it. So if I'm ignoring your question, make a note to yourself to um, research this a little bit and see if you can't figure it out. And in the process of figuring out, learn why that's the right answer. Because that's what's important. It's not enough to know, oh, this is better than that. It's more important to know why. Because if you know why, then you can deal with all of the vagaries, all of the, the, the things that come up. You'll have a body of knowledge to, to depend on and to use and to be able to bring to bear to solving problems. I feel so much better.
uh, vegan diet has sugar. Yeah, it does. It does. And that's why I'm not doing it. <laughs> Frowny Fawn <phone> says, <coughs> my answer to every question is either YouTube or Google it. Yeah, right. Right. <coughs> and that's not trying to get out of anything. <coughs> That's saying, if you really want to know, <coughs> then learn. Because what you want to know is not the answer to a question. What you want to know is what, what's the process that's at stake here? What, what am I really dealing with? <coughs> I was thinking about this. I'm putting a sermon together in a couple of weeks to a bunch of farmers. And... I, I was thinking about nature as the expression of God. Now, a lot of people look at that and they think, well, he's saying nature is God. No, it's not. And I, I don't say that. What I do say is the hand of God is in it. And a farmer looks below the surface. He looks at how things are happening and why things are happening. He gets below the, the, the obvious. The corn grew last week. Why did it grow? <clears throat> What's going on that made it grow? Was it rain? Was it something in the soil? Was it the seed I'm using? What was it? And in the process of doing that, he gains a deeper understanding of the nature of the reality of his farm and how it functions, how it operates, and what it's capable of. In other words, he gets a deeper knowledge and understanding of the way in which God has created all of this to work together. So that's, anyway, that, that came up in the process of putting this sermon together, but I think it's germane, and it certainly goes to the fish tank. We don't need to know, do A, B, C, and D. We can figure that out if we know what we're trying to achieve and why we're trying to achieve it. You know, I didn't, I did not create this system by just throwing stuff all again, up against the wall to see what happened. Did not do that. I did substantial research. I studied and followed Amano extensively. Wallstead extensively, and I studied Merle Cohen, who was one of the absolute geniuses. Talk about an unsung hero. Merle Cohen founded Aquarium Products, out of which virtually everything of value in the hobby has come. <clears throat> Plastic bags, for example. Styrofoam boxes, for example. Food, for example, medication. <coughs> he, from the 50s forward, he developed all of those product lines. An absolute genius. And he brought a deep substrate technology from the Far East, from, I'm going to get this wrong because I always do. <coughs> Or excuse me, Malaysia, to the United States in the 19, early 1960s and demonstrated it at a, at, a, 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 at a global conference, I believe in Cincinnati, Ohio, in 1964. <clears throat> it was a, a, a product show involving everything that had been developed up to that point in the industry. And he showed this all. And the saltwater people ran with it. The freshwater people couldn't be bothered. Because they were looking in, at ways of selling this, that, and the other thing. The saltwater people wanted to keep stuff alive because they really wanted to be able to maintain coral in these enormously difficult saltwater fish. And that kick started it and made it possible. <coughs> then Garf came along. 
in the early in the late eighties, Garth built uh, an entire system, an entire farm, a coral farm based on deep substrate, no water changes, totally natural environment. And they reseeded whole vast coral reefs around the world with that single project. And they got tens of thousands of hobbyists involved in things like miracle mud. So this is a long history that's brought us to this point. So it is solid. It is solid as a rock. And the part of the reason we're doing this book is to be able to demonstrate how solid it really is. There are now YouTubers, brand new young people, starting YouTubes about natural aquariums. Oh yes, they've heard of Father Fitch. But they choose not to mention to him because, well, because they want to show how smart they are. And that's great. I mean, that's fine. And that's wonderful. And I don't have a problem with that at all. This is not mine. <coughs> and I don't claim that. <coughs> um, this is what we all need to be doing. And we all need to be growing in it. Lord, I ain't going to be around forever. I may not be around for 20 more years. I mean, in 20 years, I could be gone. Imagine that. In 20 years, no more Father Fish. Imagine that. Well, <laughs> stranger things have happened. Andrew says, no more questions from me, I promise. No, 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 Andrew. No, please don't do that. I want questions. I do. I sincerely do. I want questions. I want questions that are a result of some work and some effort on your part. Not looking for a quick, easy answer so you won't have to do any studying or any actual learning. Do you get the gist of what I'm saying? I absolutely want questions. Absolutely. Ask me the tough ones, the hard ones. I want the questions that I can't answer. Those are the ones I'm excited about. Those are the ones I really want. Uh -huh. Don't want to imagine no more Father Fitch, says Crystal. <laughs> God bless you, Crystal. God bless you. Give you a wrench, dear. Ah. Live on through our tanks. Amen to that. I know, Andrew. I know. TDS. TDS much? Really? Silver Creek is here. Rye Guy Outdoors. What's your opinion about eel reproduction? Wow. Wow. Now, here's... This is a good one. Rye Guy knows something that most of us don't know. <coughs> Eel reproduction, my opinion, I don't have an opinion about it. Um, does, do you know where and what the Sargassum Sea is? The Sargassum Sea is a vast bed of plant material virtually in the middle of the ocean. It's more toward Florida, off the Bahamas, kind of down south of the Bahamas. It's a vast area of solid seaweed growing on the surface. It's called the Sargassum Sea. You don't run a boat through it, not easily. <clears throat> it, if I, I'm not current on my research, and maybe... You are a right guy. If you are, please inform me. But my the, the research I did some years ago on this 
demonstrated that both the American eel and the European eel, when they became sexually mature, went to the Sargassum Sea to spawn. <coughs> now, I presume at that point they died. I don't know. Maybe they went back. Maybe they didn't. But every egg was hatched in the Sargassum Sea. So when you see these tiny little, what are they called? The eelets. There's a word for them. Let me see if I can get down to the bottom of the chat. When you see, what are they called? Don't remember. They look like a little sliver of glass. And you find them in rivers and creeks, of all things. In rivers and creeks. They hatch thousands of miles away. It's not, it is a larvae, but there's a specific word for it that defines them as eels. Glass eel, I think that's a common a common uh, term used for it. There is a technical term. <coughs> anyway, glass eel, el, elva, angulus, elver, elver, that's it. Skyfeet got it. Elvers. They have swum. Now, again, I'm not sure this is true because I haven't researched it in probably 20 years. <clears throat> but that was my understanding. <clears throat> the, research of that, uh, the research up to that point. Those elvers came up into fresh water and grew. They, all the way up into northern New York into Canada, I'm sure, and get big, big, I mean, big guys, and then swam all the way back to the Sargassum Sea to spawn and die. That's a real trick. How do you duplicate that on a fish farm? <laughs> I don't even think Capturing them in the Sargassum Sea and trying to raise them will work. For one thing, they're probably 20 years old by the time they get back there. I mean, these suckers get big. <clears throat> so, eels. Fascinating, fascinating. Uh, I don't know that now. That's true of the American eel and the European eel. There's one more little bit of information that goes with this. Do you know the difference between an American eel and a European eel? Critical difference. The difference is, and this is really quite simple, the European eel grows up in Europe. The American eel grows up in America. Are they the same eel? Lord only knows. <laughs> Eels in Cornwall. <clears throat> That's pretty far from the Sargasso. You betcha. There are eels all over cold climates. Way up into Russia. Into Canada. I don't know if. I don't know how far east they go. They may, they may not range in the Pacific. They probably don't. I don't know about that. <clears throat> Elvers. Uh, Atkins. Where was Atkins here? I'm jumping around a lot. Okay, people are ask, answering questions. Helpful. Removed an anchor worm, or actually the two pieces outside his body. You think it's best to go back for the part inside? It can infect. Uh, and it may. Um, two things will happen. It'll either form a cyst or it'll be absorbed uh, unless it infects. So three things will happen. It'll either infect the fish and create a, 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 a problem you can't solve or it will insist C-Y-S-T, E-N-C-Y-S-T, 
create a cyst like a pocket around it. Or it will do the third thing, which I've already lost track of. Come out, whatever. Um, insist, infect, insist, infect, or 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 be um, purged. I guess. Um, yeah, I would try to get it out if I could. I I would. It's real important when you're doing that kind of thing to try to get the whole animal. It can be difficult. You don't want to just jerk. If something's attached to a fish, you don't want to just jerk it. You need to tease it. <clears throat> and very often, if you will poke at the parasite, it'll back out. It'll come out all by itself, the whole thing. Just kind of um, irritated. But a lot. I mean, irritated. Be mean. Be mean to the parasite. And it'll come out looking to get away. That happens more often than not. I've had that happen fairly frequently. So that's my technique anymore. If I find something halfway burrowed into the flesh of a, of a fish, I'll just start playing with it with a needle. Just poke at it, poke at it. <clears throat> and usually it'll, it'll jerk and then poke at it again, and it'll jerk it and poke at it again, and it'll back out and try to get away. So try that. <coughs> Volcanics work says, thank God for the discord. I appreciate that we're able to answer, but don't get me started, Volcanics. Don't get me started. One of the, one of the real functions of the discord is, is not to be a Mr. Answer, but to help people work through whatever they're doing. We have video, the audio video there, chance to be able to post pictures and videos of your saying to talk in depth, to even create your own channel so you can have a history of what's going on and what you've been doing. It's a wonderful tool uh, and it's, it's really pretty effective. Uh, what we have not done yet is really set up research channels on that that will be non-comment channels that will simply have information. And I, I think that will be the next step. Particularly with a book coming out, we'll need to do that. What if the fish farm is at the Sargasso? Well, I don't think that's going to work straight out of Cornwall because they got to go up into fresh water <coughs> to grow out. They grow out in fresh water. They don't grow out in salt water. It's a freshwater eel that spawns in salt water. A lot of animals do that. The blue crab, for example, is a brackish water crab. It grows out in brackish water. Brackish all the way up to fresh. I mean, I've caught, <clears throat> I've caught blue crabs in Florida and here in Maryland in totally fresh water. Not landlocked, but up in creeks and streams <coughs> that were that were, excuse me, that were, uh, uh, that, that flowed into brackish and then salt water. Uh, for the crab, it has to do with food. <coughs> Incidentally, while I'm thinking about it, I watched a video the other day by Mark Wise. Mark Wise is one of the great luminaries of the fish hobby of the industry. <clears throat> he's developed a line of products much like Merle Cohen. He's, he's, uh, he was around when Merle Cohen was around. They kind of came up together. Merle was a bit older than him. Started 10, 15 years before Mark. But Mark Wise has become probably the single most important voice and source of knowledge and understanding of the nature of food for fish. <clears throat> and he made a very interesting claim. 
He said fish have zero need for carbohydrates. Zero. They have no biological requirement for carbohydrates. Which means, according to him, that fish do not gain any value, any direct value, from eating plants. Even the so-called plant-eating fish are in fact not eating plants for the plants. They're eating plants for the microbiology that is living on the plants. That's what they digest. <clears throat> it took me aback because I had never considered that. He said one other thing, very interesting. <clears throat> beef heart. He said beef heart has has insufficient nutrient value for fish, and it's fed commonly to discus. Insufficient. He said what does have sufficient nutritional value is liver. <clears throat> I've never fed liver. Liver, in fact, is much easier to feed. It's easier to process. You don't have to get all the fat out of it unless it's diseased, in which case you don't want to use it anyway. You can get really good, clean liver, process it very simply, and feed it without much trouble. He uses a binder. And, and this surprised me after saying what he did about a vegetable matter. He said wheat germ, I think it was wheat germ, is the very best binder for, um, for, for whatever kind of food you're putting together. He said gels are worthless. They are an obstruction of new value and in fact maybe of negative value. I mean, you listen to this guy long, and you think I'm controversial? Whoa. <clears throat> Mark Weiss <clears throat> shoots down two-thirds of the industry in one five-minute talk. <clears throat> you ought to follow up with him. Mark Weiss, M-A-R-C-W-E-I-S-S. -S. I'll start trying to get some of this video. So. Remarkable and well worth listening to. Well worth learning from. Oh, let's move along here. William Avery, I definitely watched a lot of your videos and learned a lot from you, but I'm still learning more and more. But I'm glad I started the Father Fish style substrate. And that's absolutely right, William. That's what it's all about. I'm learning constantly. You know, I'm, I mean, I learned stupid things, stupid things, things you'd think I would know that I'm too stupid to know, <clears throat> like what has become a turtle tank, used to be a really nice fish tank, now it's a turtle tank, I'm going to show you the turtles at some point, but I gotta wait till they're up, they, they tie down, they're musk turtles or mud turtles and they're they one of them is up at the top a little bit but i'll wait till they're both out and then get a camera to them they're really cute but what i realize is i can't have anything else in there because they'll eat it any fish they're just right after it i put a little frog in he didn't in, in less than a minute one of them had him by the leg i was able to rescue him <coughs> And he did fine, and we released him outside. <coughs> but they're cool little turtles, and I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna give them that tank. They do not bother the plants, so I've got to get more plants growing. The tank crashed um, about two two weeks ago. I put a bundle of plants in there that I think were returned or something happened, and they they were probably dead. I don't know why I did it. Threw them in there. They fouled the water, hauled them out, threw them away, and then the water is cleared up, and it's clear now. 
the tank's kind of a mess. So i got to get more stuff in. I've been planting better plants in it. I want to get some nice stuff going. <clears throat> That'll take a little while to get started. So anyway, that's now my turtle thing. Da -da -da -da. Rye Guy Outdoors, low maintenance. Barely feeds from my tank. Let me say something about this. The no food thing. I, I had a guy say today, I have stopped feeding my fish. Ain't I smart? And I said, well, it's great. Tell me about your food web. Oh, what's that? <sighs> so I said, well, your fish are going to starve. And then they're going to die. Because they have to eat. The no food thing is all about creating a food web that creates a natural food <clears throat> as part of the cycle of life in the tank <clears throat> that the fish and the microfauna become part of that provides nutrition for the fish, nutrition for the microfauna, and keeps the cycle going such that you don't need to put extra food in there because the fish eat the microfauna, which eats the dead plants, which eats the waste, which grows more microfauna, which the fish eat like that. Oh, he says, oh, okay. How do I do that? <laughs> Watch some videos. I've got a hundred videos about just exactly how to do that. And I think the learning process for an awful lot of people like this, and I think it's mostly young people, I hate to say it, don't understand what learning is. And they don't understand... They think learning is getting a piece of information and just using that piece of information. That's not what learning is. Learning is developing an understanding of why things are the way they are because you've learned how they got that way, what it is that underlies them, that allows that to be the case. It's a matter of philosophy, logic, thinking, and being able to go in depth on a subject to understand how it is put together. Any good mechanic knows exactly what that is. Any good farmer, gardener, knows exactly what that is. Frankly, anyone has, who, has, who has put together an operating system for a computer knows exactly what that is because it's all the bits and pieces working together that make it happen. It's not grab this and grab that, throw them in and you got it. It's not like that. It's not like that at all. So we have to... We have to we have to teach these young people who have been through an educational system that does not educate. It indoctrinates. It has the, 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 the whole process of education is completely lost. I thought the most brilliant thing, the most brilliant thing I read this week was our vice president saying, I grew up in the public school system. She put her finger on the very problem. The public school system, which did not teach her, nor does it teach anyone else how to think. That's what we have to do. That's what we're doing here. That's what all of this is about. 
thinking, learning, understanding, growing in knowledge. And you do it by studying. And that studying in the beginning is hard because it involves so many words and so many ideas you've never encountered before that you want to just close the book and walk away. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't fail yourself. Struggle through it. Learn the vocabulary. Learn the basic ideas. Struggle to understand them. When I took my first course in logic in my first year in college, I spent hours with a, with a couple of pairs of shoes trying to figure out logical problems. And it took me hours, hours to do it. But I got it. And when I got it, it just made so many things fall into place. I then had the tool to be able to learn. Julie said, that's why I homeschool my daughter. Well, God bless you, Julie. God bless you. Slauser said, I'll learn how to make bad decisions from school and classmates. Amen to that. I read that columnaris can be trained with methyl and blue and can be with methyl and blue and salt. Then I read that it's acute with a high mortality rate, which is it? It's acute. Uh, columnaris is acute. Um, I have tried injecting methyl and blue and various other dyes into the, the infected area in the fish, and it's always killed the fish. It's only tiny fish that get it, and they get it uh, on their saddle. Why? I don't know. They get it where the dorsal fin is, and it looks like a saddle, like a white saddle <clears throat> running across the top of the fish. comes down on the side not very far, and it's flat white, uh, kind of internal. It's very obvious. I found the best way to deal with it is to get that fish out of there as instantly as possible. Absolutely before it dies in the tank. If you will do that, you can stop it. The fish that are already infected are lost. But if you leave it in there and it dies, all of those bacteria spread through the water and infect other fish. So you want to get it out before it has a chance to, to uh, kill the fish and spread throughout the tank. <clears throat> Anytime you see a fish with columnaries, remove it. You can put it on a hospital tank. You can feed it to a bigger fish. It'll digest. I mean, it's not going to hurt uh, anything that way. It's, it's uh, destroyed by digestive juices. Ain't that weird? <clears throat> but you can put it in a hospital tank and figure out a cure. You know, maybe you'll become wealthy. Figure out a cure for columnaris. Uh, I'm sure there are those who have tried methyl and blue and salt. Uh, and they may have worked. I mean, it's a bacteria. It'll be susceptible to salt. Malachite green probably would work better uh, uh, along with probably... Uh, formalin, uh, but they're pretty delicate to use, so, although that's what quick cure is. Merle Cohen, thank you, quick cure. Um, anyway, yeah, it's nasty. Do I agree or disagree with no feeding? <clears throat> Tanks I barely feed are over eight years old. It is not, the okay, here's the thing. I agree with no feeding if the tank is able to feed all of its inhabitants. If there is enough food living and thriving in the tank for the fish to be able to survive and thrive on it. 
If that's true, then no food is necessary. Now, it's not hard to get there. It does limit the number of fish you can have in the tank. I mean, you don't want 500 fish in a 10-gallon tank and expect it to be able to feed them. It won't. They'll decimate the entire population in a day. But if you have a reasonable number and a very rich compost of, of, of you know, all of the leaves and mulch and so forth, then you'll be able to get a strong, vibrant food web going that will maintain all of the fish in the environment. <clears throat> Oxalonic acid, W.V. Coy says, can treat the gram-negative bacteria like columnaris and aromomas. But it can. It can. But it ain't a guarantee. And the best advice I have for you, if you've got columnaris, it's easy to spot, remove the fish immediately. Don't let it go for a day to see if it'll die. Get it out of there. And every other one is quicker to show up. Get it out of there. You may lose half your fish, but you'll save the other half. It'll stop it. It'll stop it dead in its tracks if you can get them all out. Before, here's the thing. If the fish has died with it and the bacteria is loose, then other fish are going to be infected. So if you start seeing two or three or four of them infected, that means you've got it in the tank. So you take them out and take them out and you keep doing it until the bacteria is no longer able to achieve a host. And once you're there, then that bacteria is effectively gone. It's no longer able to function. And so you're, you're clear of it at that point until it comes in again. I mean, it's pretty nasty stuff. So you got to be very vigilant. That's why it's so important anymore to quarantine your fish for a minimum of a week, preferably a month. Just put them in a tank, a nice little pretty tank. Give them a nice little home. You don't have to give them some sterile, yucky place they're going to be unhappy. Give them a pretty little home, by the way. I was watching a YouTuber today. Who's, I'm not going to give any details because I don't want to embarrass them or point to him. But <clears throat> he was keeping some rather rare and unusual fish. Wonderful, wonderful fish. And he was very excited and proud of them, which he had every right to be. He had them as young fish, little fish had them in completely bare tanks and said, look how cool it is. It's swimming back and forth and back and forth. And I just sat there dumbfounded. That he has no understanding of the natural behavior of fish. He likes fish. He may love fish, he's fascinated by them, but he is not bothered to learn how they live in the wild, in a natural environment, where they swim around and through plants. They go up and down through hardscape. They're surrounded by structure, by form. They're not in some empty void. They're not pelagic. You know, a pelagic fish is like a whale. They don't deal with structure. They deal with open water. <coughs> Vast open water. <coughs> Their structure is the, the, the southern tip of South America to the northern tip of Nova Scotia or something. That's their structure. But these little fish, they need structure. 
They need something to, to swim around to feel comfortable. Otherwise, they're just dashing madly around. Zoom, 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 zoom. That ain't right, and that ain't nice, and that ain't healthy, and that ain't good. Don't keep your fish in that kind of prison. That kind of sterile prison where they go mad. And they do. I believe fish become insane in that kind of environment. Which is why then after they've been in that for a year, two years, five years, you put some plants in there and tear them off. Tear them off. They don't know what to do. They don't know what it is. Tear it off. They're, they're crazy. By then, anyway, they're wholly aggressive. They've learned the only way they can cope is to charge. Don't do that to your fish. Be more aware of what their nature is and, and what they require in order to be able to function normally. Now, in the past, a, a here we go. Are your fish happy? Are they happy? Do your fish love their pen? Do they love? Do you love them? Do they love you? Your fish love you. Oh dear. You know, that's very seductive. And when a teenage girl asks me if my bettas love me the way hers love her, <sighs> it's tough. <laughs> Fish do not have a medulla. They don't have a, a part of the brain that is the source of emotion like love, like fear, like anger, like joy, they don't experience emotion. Fish don't experience emotion. I'm not sure they even experience pain. Now, there's some controversy about that. But I've seen an awful lot of fish that have been literally cut in half, swimming and eating. Oh, my God. I saw a picture recently. A blue crab in a pot of soup. The soup was boiling. Sitting on top of the soup was a vegetable and a crab. The crab was sitting there eating the vegetable in a pot of boiling soup. The heat hadn't caught up to him quite yet. It just, it, it, it was visually stunning. Now, I know as soon as the heat hit him, uh, it was going to be a different story, but it was really kind of remarkable. But these 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 animals, they don't experience pain. That's certainly not the way we do. I mean, you can you can probe a fish with a needle all the way into its body and release it, and it will show no signs of discomfort whatsoever. None. It'll be like it never happened. They don't have the part of the brain that we have that'll, that would allow them to experience reality in the way that we do. So they experience reality in a very, very different way. We can call it a primitive way. I think that's probably appropriate. But it's certainly not the way we experience reality. So, anymore, I'm trying to avoid talking about my fish being happy. And struggling for better language. And I guess that's really appropriate. Because we need to be able to be more specific about what we're really intending to say 
and, and what really is happening based on our best understanding. Peggy Madden, you are now wrenched, my dear. Mark Twain lives, she says. I love it. Jury 86, so you need to do weekly or bi-weekly water changes when you first start up a tank until the decaying metal starts to move through the sand. Not a bad question. Not a bad question. They'll make you a moderator, which I would do anyway. And I'm going to answer your question because your question demonstrates that you have tried to figure some things out and you've got a genuine, sincere, very real question. Here's the answer. By doing water changes at the earliest stage, you're going back to the beginning. If your water has developed uh, uh, up to this point, and then you jerk, you, <coughs> you jerk it back. It comes back up, you jerk it back. So, no, I want to I wanna see that water continue to develop the biology that it needs in order to be able to sustain. That's why it's so important at the beginning to go slow. Don't dump a lot of stuff in there. You can load it up with plants because plants will help the water to keep it pure and provide it with, with oxygen that it will need in order to be able to, to nurture the other life that's in it particularly the bacteria, which require oxygen, the microfauna, which require oxygen. So you need those plants in there. And then you need to add a couple of fish right away so you can get some balance going. Now, it's going to be, it's going to be minuscule at the beginning, but, that, but it's exponential. It, it grows and it develops. And it's amazing how quickly it's like, it's like duckweed. The, the exponential growth of, of a tank becoming healthy, it's like the growth of duckweed. If you have one single leaf of duckweed in your tank and nothing eats it, it's left alone. Tomorrow, there will be two. The next day, there will be four. And then there will be eight. And then there will be 16. And then there will be 32. And then 64. And then 128. And then 256. And then 512. And then 1,024. And then 2,000, 4,000, 8,000. By the end of a week, the cover, the top of that tank will be covered in duckweed. <laughs> duckweed. I ran into a death man today. It was interesting. He's from Turkey. He's an older gentleman, sweet man, uh, very animated. Um, he was working in a restaurant. His family owns the restaurant, and they've, they've allowed him to work there. He's in his 60s, I guess. Little tiny guy. Bustling around, cleaning tables, saying hello. Every new person that comes in, he says, like this, with a big smile. I didn't realize, I didn't catch it at first. I'd seen him two times. Somebody said, you know, he's deaf. Oh, my God. Why did I miss it? How did I miss it? So next time he came in, I got his attention, which is easy to do with a deaf person because they're so visually acute. They know everything that's going on. Got his attention. I did this. He did big smile, this. I did this. He did, which demonstrated something very interesting. He understood what I was saying, but he does not know how to sign. Now, not only that, they make the claim he lip reads 
I don't believe he does. I don't believe he has any language at all. And I've known a number of deaf people like this, never around other deaf people growing up. So no opportunity to, to learn language. Nobody teaching him language. <clears throat> so he grows up with no language. He, I don't think he even has any rudimentary signs. He probably has some that he's invented and used with his family. But he doesn't have a language. An older man, bright, alert, obviously intelligent, living with this disability that has isolated him from communication verbal with the world, and yet he's functioning in, in the most animated, friendly, loving, joyous way. Remarkable. Just remarkable makes me want to teach him language. I've done that. I, I, I've done that with a number of people. I did it in a milieu setting where I brought people out of institutions and put them in communities of deaf where they develop language. And it happened very quickly. I once saw a little four-year-old boy at a school for the deaf in Haiti. He was found brought into the school. Had no no sign, nothing. Didn't understand anything. First time, he's he's doing this. All the other kids are signing. He's doing this. Doesn't know what it means, but he sees everybody doing it, so he's doing it. Within two days, he's got a few signs. Within a week, he's signing, communicating. Within a month, he was wholly literate to the level of the, of the other students. Four-year-old, one month. Full language. Amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. Talk about learning. That's learning. <laughs> That's learning. What's my favorite fish? Fish keeper wants to know what my... Oh, it changes all the time. You know, I finally had, for the first time, I had a flash today. I looked at a tank and I thought it's all fish. I knew it couldn't be there. And then it struck me, I want that fish. And I wrote it down. <laughs> That's illegible. Checkerboard cichlids. I want to get some checkerboard cichlids. I think they are the prettiest little fish. They're hard to come by. They're not real common. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. Something that's not common, that's small, that's unique, uh, that I'll be fascinated by. So I need to find a source for checkerboard cichlids. Anybody knows, please put me onto them. I want to get some. Jerry, did I give you a wrench? I thought I did. I did. This hadn't come through yet. There's a club. We have t-shirts. Coral's Crafty Lady, Karen Hahn. Well, post the link, Karen. Let's see, scrolling down. Ah, uh, here he says, Carwall, I'm applying for full custody. You're coming to live with your weird new uncle. Stranger things have happened here. Stranger things have happened. <laughs> and Carwall says, to be sure, to be sure. Scott Stankovich. I keep duckweed out of the frog bit because, like Father Fritz says, duckweed will out compete the frog out compete the frog bit. By the way, I did a video recently uh, about clearing out duckweed using a wet vac, and it really does work because you can get every single leaf. Now you'll miss one, and it will start up again. So you go through, do a follow up a week later to get those. If you stay with it for about a month, they'll be gone. You won't have them again. Dear, bring them in again. But you can get rid of them that way. Starve the soul. Starve the soul. Well, that's curious. Going to give you a wrench. Starve the soul. Starve the soul. I got to shave. I found my chin. 
I haven't seen my chin in 20, well, 20 years. 20 years since I've seen my chin. I don't like it a bit better now than I did when I covered it up. <laughs> ah. Cool little fish new since I left the hobby. They really are. They really, really are. Rainwater for aquarium top ups. Here's the problem. Using rainwater, RO water, spring water, distilled water, any of that, if you're using it for top offs, the plants and other micro life that are in the water in the system are depleting the water of minerals. They're taking them in. So the water is actually the GH is going down. Now, it may have enough carbonates to keep the pH up, but the GH is going to diminish. If you simply are adding non-GH water, soft, presumably acid or neutral water, it, it doesn't bolster it back up. It continues to, 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 uh, to, 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 to be reduced. So, no, I don't recommend that. If you have a balanced tank. Now, if you've got a bare tank with nothing but water in it, and a lot of filters going, then, yeah, take half of it out and replace it. And do it every day. You're better off doing it every day. Every week is a lazy man's approach to that kind of tank. If you really want to do it, what you should do is make it an open system. So water is flowing into it 24-7. That's doable. It's absolutely doable. You can do it without flooding. There's a device you can hook up to your water line that allows water to go in and come out and go into your sink at the same rate it's going in. Works on a principle I don't understand, but it works. You can do that. Merle Cohen showed me that little trick, and he even developed the device to it to do it. It's a double hose system with water coming into one and, and through, what is that? It's a principle that, that, that causes the, the, the other line to fill with water at the same level, at the same rate, based on the flow of the water. Anyway, you can do that and it works. And that's the solution to a bare tank, to a tank that, that is not by any stretch a healthy tank. I don't see anybody doing it. And I don't know why they're not. Because that would be the optimal way to keep the kind of fish they're trying to keep. And keep them in a way that's sensible. So you're not lugging buckets around every Saturday. You know, why not be intelligent about this? And set up a system that actually is effective. You want to keep them in a stream? That keeps them in a stream. Because that's got water going in 24-7 and being replaced 24-7. In and out continuously. Works. Scared to. Scared to. They don't trust the science they claim to be... Uh, committed to. What should you do with all the excess, excess stuff? I have it myself, but I feel bad kind of throwing it out of here. I know. I fertilized my lawn with it. There are a lot of things that will eat it. Chickens love it. You feed it to your chickens. Uh, crayfish love it. You can keep a crayfish, uh, a crayfish tank. But you got to keep it low enough they can get to it because they won't swim up to it. I don't think shrimp will eat it. Um, you know, find something that eats it. That's the way to do it. Braden Job needs a wrench. I'm currently trying to have a natural planet tank somewhat like you keep yours. So I'm Trying to learn what's best to get the water stable. 
Very good, Brady. Come on over to Discord. We can we can work together on that. Uh, somebody post the link. Can I post the link? I can post the link. Ain't that witness? I can post the link. I'm gonna get it here in about 14 seconds. My actual count. Now I gotta look at Discord. I don't want to look at Discord. It'll get me totally distracted. All right, here's the link. Click on that link. That is a permanent link. That one will not expire. So you can use that to your heart's content. Duckweed salad. Not a bad idea. Probably get caught in your throat, though. Put in mind. Put some ranch on it. All right. Uh, here we go. Sylvia, trying to keep goldfish, the water out of the tap. As ammonia in my pH is high, I had a wooden leaf just now the day. pH is not going to hurt them. High pH is not going to hurt a goldfish. The ammonia could. If you put a lot of plants in there, They'll observe the ammonia. It won't be that much. You're not going to have that much unless, no, you're not. Unless there's something foul in your water source. Um, plants will deal with it. Yeah, checkerboards don't show up often, do they? A butterfly loads. That's a neat little bit. A lot of loaches. Loaches are cool, too. I can do loaches. There are a lot of really interesting loaches. Fish Keeper has gone to sleep. Good night, Fish Keeper. Sweet dreams. Dream about fish. William got the bundle plants. Some very nice ones. There are. Of the 15, that's six, actually 16 different varieties of stem plants. So you get a, you know, you get a chance to try a lot of different things. And some of them are real hard and some of them are real easy. And you learn that too. So that's really what it's all about. I do an extra one or two to make sure any losses are covered. And we just gave a wrench to Patuo 6 Jones. Let's see. Yeah, we're doing okay. We're looking okay. We're doing okay. We're stable. We're here. We got 104 people with us. Nice little crowd. That's twice as many as we had in church today. Ain't that so? <laughs> I got a system. I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. <laughs> I'm preaching on the fourth and the eighteenth. And I'm gonna I'm gonna teach him how to double the member double the attendance by the end of the year. And they can do it. They really can do it. These are all lovely people. Just genuinely lovely people. Every single one of them. I mean it's a tra the fifty two there today. Utterly lovely people. There are not two under 70. Well, maybe three. So, I'm not the oldest by a long shot. Nobody 100, but we have one just celebrated his 91st birthday. A couple others in their late 80s. Two of them are 91, actually. Just lost one at 94. <clears throat> geriatrics. But they are hale and hearty. They are up and about. They are doing things. They are active as buzzsaws. A lot of them in their 70s. <clears throat> so I got a, I got a system. And I got to put it to them. I will be, I'll be videoing that sermon. So I'll have it posted. you will have a chance to, to catch both of them. I'll have them both. 
Patuo Jones. Let's see. Let me let me give you a wrench and then see what you're talking about. Or I did the wrench. I set up my second tank, 40 gallon, to give my seven mollies some space. Now do the 20. And the new tank are for a goldfish, been in there 10 days. How much longer should I wait? Or you don't need to wait at all. Keep in mind that mollies are a brackish water fish. They like hard alkaline water. They can live in a wide range of water. I have found them in salt acid water with a pH of 5.0. So they can live in a wide range of water. They prefer because they are native to brackish water. They prefer a hard alkaline tank. If you're at 7.0, you're good. If you're down around 6.0, I would kick it up a bit. Put some sodium bicarb in there, some seashells, something to increase the carbonate level, and just kick it up, get it buffered a little higher. Uh, you don't need to wait at all. With the goldfish, you got it pretty well acclimated. You probably can keep them together. <clears throat> the mollies, I don't believe, are going to bother the goldfish, and I know the goldfish won't bother the mollies. They, they kind of are simpatico with each other. Actually, they would do well together. The only issue is the goldfish are going to get a whole lot bigger than the mollies. <clears throat> so, but that's not going to hurt the mollies particularly. Name of the video dealing with duckweed. I don't remember. It's a recent one, and I think it may be a short. It may be uh, cleaning up duckweed or something like that. I think it is a short. What do you think of the invasive African jewelfish? You're only asking this probable cause because you know I got an attitude about it. They are one of the few truly destructive invasives. There are not many, and I'm talking Florida here. There are not uh, aquatic wise. There probably are no more than two or three invasive fish that are destructive. <coughs> there are a number of others, but they are in niches that are not competing substantially with native species, so called so-called native species. So the whole argument about invasives is a specious argument. It ignores the reality of what invasive really means because it means any fish that was not created by God in that, or evolved in that specific body of water. And that includes pretty much everything. Pretty much. There isn't much that evolved in any body of water from 200 million years ago to today that can be genuinely referred to as native. And in point of fact, the Florida Wildlife Commission defines a native species as any that has lived in Florida waters for a minimum of 100 years. From 1920 forward. Anything that was in that water from 1920 and earlier is considered native. Now, that's 100 years. So in the year 3000, anything that is in the water in Florida now, in the year 2000, will be considered native. Think about that for a minute. That'll blow your mind. What does that have to say about invasive species? <clears throat> Dyslexia kicking in. Did I catch him? Did who catch him? 
What do you think happened during the mighty flood? There you go. There you go. Good point, Marines. And if anybody thinks that's purely biblical, you haven't studied geography. Because geography demonstrates that uh, within the last million years, there's been global flooding, substantial global flooding. What does that do to native species? You don't think snakeheads are? Here's the thing about snakeheads. There are somewhat something like 14 different species of snakehead. Two, maybe three of them are potentially destructive invasive species. The rest are not. They only get that big. Four to six inches. Full grown. A dozen of the species of that family are dwarfs. All of them are banned. That is fundamental ignorance. It is legislation based on stupidity. It is the dunderheads who can't think about anything but the oh they're idiots, 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 and I gotta say it, idiots, idiots who make our laws, idiots who have no comprehension of what that law does, how it impacts anything. All they care about is exerting their power. Well, God bless them. I hope their power bites them where the sun don't shine. <laughs> oh. Calm down there, Father Fish. Calm down. Instant duckweed fix. That's it, right? You got it, Tom. There it is. On the diet, yeah, I'm on, well, I'm not on a diet. I'm on a food plan. It's different. In a diet, you go hungry. You starve yourself. I'm not going hungry. There's no hunger involved in my food plan. My food plan simply, uh, uh, <coughs> I've been, I've sneezed three or four times today. Hmm. My food plan Father Chris Owens said to teach you, oh, honey, I am close to teach you. Already in hell. Ain't that the truth, architect? Where's your wrench? You have not signed up to the channel, wrench. Yeah, architect. I use her on this channel. Put use her channel. What is this? There we go. Moderate. I'm going to give her a wrench one more time there. You need to sign up on the channel. As a just sign up, just uh, click on subscribe, doesn't cost you a penny, and that way you can keep your wrench, otherwise, you lose your wrench, and I gotta restore it every week. Hmm. And I might miss you, and then you won't have it, and we'll, we won't have the benefit of your brilliance. Maureen lasted 30 hours on Carnival. Yeah, I, I got to say that the first couple of days were the toughest. But I just got through my 20th day. And that was tough. Because I was really craving something sweet. Something scrumptious. So I, I was at a birthday party and had cake. I, <laughs> something sugary. Something like fruit. You know, those flavors are, are so endearing. Um, but I, I did not succumb. I have a cheat. I'll show you my cheat. My cheat is Lifesavers. These are the uh, wintergreen. I can do one of these in a day. And that's all, that's 10, 10 calories. 
one in a day, and uh, that helps me get by. 3G, thank you, 3G, for your $10 super chat. And he says, thanks for being you. Well, I have no choice in the matter, but I deeply appreciate your $10 gift. Very, very much so. Carrie, frowning fawn, most of my fish are well caught. Whoa, melanistic mosquitoes. That's only the male that's melanistic. Self and mollies, bluefin killings, least thin flagfish, sheep said. Oh, wonderful. You've got to be in Florida. Well, or anywhere on the coast, actually. All of those are common to uh, uh, the Gulf Coast. The, my favorite of all of those is the, the sheep's head minnow. They are stunning. You get them in a tank by themselves and they will breed. And I tell you what, the colors on that male are st absolutely stunning. I had a biologist who worked in the Peace River his whole entire career look in my tank and say, what's that? It was a male sheep's head minnow in full bloom and full color. He said, I've never seen that. And he's caught thousands, probably tens of thousands of them. But the minute you dip them out of the water, they lose the color instantly. He's never seen one in full color. And he was amazed. And I was amazed that he was amazed. That was a great moment. Very great moment. Hello, Pa. We'll keep pea puffers. Well, yeah, yeah, pea puffers can be tough. Can be tough. They're cute. Snapman had me even better than twice a day. Yeah, I don't mind doing two. I haven't needed to. I can do one, and, and that'll get me through. It'll get me through that, that little bit of craving. And then if I eat something right away, that 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 kind of takes it all away. It's really a discipline. Um, you know, I spent my whole life eating things I liked the taste of, but they were not good for me. And now I'm not doing any of that. What I found is that if I'm really hungry, I'll go to the fridge. First thing, go get something. And I'll start eating it and it'll taste wonderful. And I'll really enjoy it. And I'll eat it until I lose my taste for it. And that's when I'm not hungry anymore. It's really very simple. How do you know when you're full? When your food doesn't taste good anymore. When you've lost the taste for it. That's how you know. That's your body telling you you've had enough. I never knew that. That just happened to me by eating steak until I didn't like it anymore. So I stopped eating it. And I went back to it the next day. And I liked it. It wasn't that I didn't like it. I did like it. I just didn't like it when I didn't want it. And I didn't want it when I didn't need it. So I didn't need it when I didn't like it, when I didn't want it, until I needed it and then I liked it and I hated it. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Grow your own, don't plant a politician. Excellent, excellent. I have platies with angels. That's a good mix. Platies are not aggressive at all, and now there are angels. Really, they're somewhat territorial. When they get to spawning, they're, they're like. Like that. How do I like your eggs? Smothered in salsa. Yeah, that's good. I like them. I like eggs. I like them. Um, I like them whipped, fried, and flipped. Just kind of hit that half flip so they're soft in the center and fairly light. I think that's my favorite. 
I really like the restaurant eggs that are kind of puffy. I don't know how to do that, but I, I think it's got milk. I don't know. I like milk eggs. My mother used to make eggs with milk, and I like that real well. I haven't done any. I need to do that. Can buy frozen meat. Yes, that's right. Midnight feast, anyone? I find if I eat late at night, my blood sugar is up in the morning. Now, by up, I mean 150 up, not 290. Highest blood pressure I've had since I've been on this was 190, and it was when I forgot to do a nighttime shot. And it was 190, with it still within range, according to my doctor. Well, respectable old man. Can you share some old school or historic natural fish farming methods in the future? I certainly can. I'm not sure what the real value, other than being of general interest. But yeah, I've done a little bit of that. I would be happy to. That's a good idea, actually. I worked on a couple of fish farms. Worked on one long enough to really kind of get into the, the whole process of, of farming fish. So I've got at least a rudimentary knowledge of how it's done and what what you know what to do, what to look for. And that would be interesting to chronicle that. Let me give that one. So I'll figure out a way to do it. By the way, I've got a new feature coming up that's called emergent. Well, that's not what it's called. It's emergency broadcast. It's flash important. Flash. Um, I think it's important. What is, you know what? I can maybe, maybe, eh, it's too much work. I'll get lost if I do it. I can maybe find this and show you. You'll see it on the first video. It's an intro and an outro with about two to four minutes in between, talking about a specific issue where there is confusion, misunderstanding, or new information. Confusion, misunderstanding, or new information. And the first one is going to be mud in the resurrection jar. Do not. Do not, and I say again, do not put mud in your resurrection jar. Put leaf mulch in it. Do not put mud in your resurrection jar. Do not. It will, nine times out of ten, foul the water. The one time out of ten that some folks have gotten away with, God bless you, you have the miracle touch. Most people fail by doing that. I don't know where the idea came from. It probably was simply an extrapolation of things I've said. And that's an example of what I was talking about earlier. Just grabbing a thought here and a grab a thought there. And a grab a thought here and throw them all together. Doesn't work. You got to understand why you're doing what you're doing in order to be able to do it right. It ain't simply a matter of following a recipe. It's a matter of understanding how that works and why that works to the best of your ability. None of us understand it to the depths of its reality. All of us understand it as deeply as we are capable based on our study experience and so forth. Especially and so forth. So do that. Do that. Like when your mom catches you smoke, and she'd make you smoke an entire pack. That's what meat became to be. Well, that's right. That's exactly. That means you were full. You didn't need any more. That's right. So don't touch it. Go back to it the next day, and you will like it again. You'll enjoy it. It's not like smoking a pack of cigarettes all at once. It's not, really not. You don't try to force yourself to eat something you don't want. It's your body telling you you've had enough. 
it doesn't taste good anymore, fine, put it aside. Put it in the fridge. I've got a plate in the fridge now of, I don't remember what, something. I don't know what it is. I'd have to go look. I don't know. I know I've got some pieces of chicken in there. I'm probably going to have later. But there's something else I put in, whatever it is. Uh, I'll get back to it. And I pro if I heat it up, I probably will enjoy it. So, you know, trust your body's reaction. Not as, Ugh, but as, I've had enough. I've had enough. I don't need any more, don't want any more. I won't like it anymore. But tomorrow you will like it. Because you'll be hungry and it'll taste good. Your taste buds will tell you, try it. Try that, Maureen. Try it the next day. Try eating some meat the next day. Just to taste. You'll like it. But don't eat more than you want. Don't eat more than tastes good. Once it starts not tasting so good, put it aside. Just stop. You're done. You're full. You've had enough. That's the way you control your eating. It's a built-in system. It's very simple. The reason we don't apply it to all of the fruits and vegetables that we eat is because we're, we're packing them in. And your, your body doesn't have a chance to decide whether... It, whether you like it anymore or not. Or it's all sugars, which taste sweet, and they continue to taste sweet, so you keep ingesting them, in spite of the fact that they're putting on the pounds, much less destroying your organs. Try it like that. See if that works. <clears throat> Chinese circles have recently become popular and ancient fish farming methods. I don't know what you mean by Chinese circles. Could you demonstrate give us a link something? Scrambled eggs. No, not well, yeah, I guess. It's a scrambled egg. But it's a little puffy. Yeah, it's a scrambled egg. Similar to the ancient Chinese, we used pottery tanks to lay the bottom with, with volcanic rock and mud. Add aquatic plants and raise some goldfish on the lake. Well, yeah, like doing a tank, but with pottery, right? Yeah, that's what these outdoor ponds are, those standalone. Yeah, absolutely. I like it. French toast is a whopper. Can't do the bread. Can't do the bread. Now, there are some recipes. For making bread out of cream and eggs and some other things that make it taste like bread that are actually I haven't tried it but it looks pretty good and what I hear is that it tastes pretty good I'm not to a level where I have to start tricking myself into eating things that aren't what they appear to be I may well get there but I ain't there yet I do scramble when I cook eggs also for my dog, I've lost track of where I was. Graduated from the Department of Biology. Hate the need to add some drugs to fish farm. I know, I know. And they do it. And they kind of have to do it. It's kind of inevitable. Although I do believe that a little extra effort in the dirt ponds side of the farming industry, a little extra effort in the direction of enriching that substrate would reduce the need for chemicals because it would provide, I mean, the, most of the dirt ponds, at least in Florida, are open to whatever, snakes or turtles or herons or ferrets or whatever other animal wants to get in there and chew up the fish. It's open to all of them. So doing, doing a more planted pond 
would not only provide a secondary harvest, the fish are by and large tracked, uh, not seined. It's only at the end that they're seined. Prior to that, they're trapped with minnow traps uh, in, in order to be able to catch the days of the, the day's requirement. So I think that would be very doable. I don't know anyone is doing that, um, but it would provide a multiple harvest for that pond. You'd have to get in there with your boots, uh, with your waders, but that water is rarely more than two to three feet deep anyway. So you could do it and you'd be able to get some magnificent plants going. Even if you only harvest them around the edges. And that would create more microfauna, which would provide more food, natural food, which would reduce the impact of the food that's thrown in there. And it's it's a penchant for nurturing parasites and other undesirables. Like that. Sushi. I like sushi. I eat a lot. Uh, I'm, I've been big smoking. Smoke big. It's big smoking. Smoke big. <laughs> I want to get some smoke bacon. That sounds good. Mitch ketchup in the noodles. No noodles. No noodles. No noodles. A smoked bacon sounds good. <clears throat> yeah, t try try being more gentle with yourself on it. Don't just uh, cast it aside. It take. I'll tell you what helps is watching some videos from people who are doing it and have some understanding, because it helps you to 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 understand what's going on in your own body, in your own system. That that really was a big help to me at the beginning. And I find I need that as I move down the road with this. Um, and I'm going to need a lot more of it as I reach the point where I'm getting closer to my goal, because then I'm going to want to cheat. Frowning fawn started a tank three weeks ago, much more relaxed and calm, but my neck hurts from turning to look at the tank. Well, you twit, turn your chair, then you won't have to turn your neck. Be just sit there and look at the tank. What else you got to do that's more important to do, or more enjoyable to do, or simply better to do? than to sit and look at your tank. Let's see if we can spot this guy here. Ooh. There's one of them. What's he doing? Taking a breath. He's breathing. Watching a turtle breathe. Now there's fun for the feeble-minded. Do something, turtle. He ain't gonna do nothing. He got to sit there half the day till I move the camera. I hope you can see him. So I got two of those little buggers in there. And they're doing just fine. But it is their tank. It ain't anybody else's anymore. All right, where are we? What time is it? Eight o'clock. We're, we're done. Look at that. First time we look at the clock, it's two hours on the button. Dooby doo. Justin found Fawn. Fawn. Maybe needs a wrench. I think I just gave you one. Do it now. Do it, do it, do it. He says, after binge watching your videos this week, I decided to make the change and swapped out both my fish this weekend for natural tanks. Just finished the 60 
a few minutes ago. Well, you'd be a happy man. Uh, come on over on Discord. Talk about this. Share it. You can set your own channel and be able to document it on a daily basis. If you run into anything, there will be people there to help. So it's a really, really good resource. Went to a store for fish, told him I wanted four clownfish to test them. He actually was honest and said to only get two. Five star review coming. Good man, good point. Excellent. Excellent. <clears throat> Aquatic moose. Hello, hello. I know, turtle won't do anything. Release the turtles. Take care of the snails. He is cute, isn't he? Architect said, I miss your beard. Makes it look like a jerk. I know. I've had a couple of people say it makes it made you, makes you look smarter with a beard. I like you better with a beard. Well, I think I like me better, too. Actually. Um, but I'm going through a transition here. You need to bear with me. Because it's a kind of an overall major sort of thing. I mean, we've gone from last Christmas, 12,000 subscribers to, I don't even know how many I got right now, 50 something, six, is it? I think. 56,000. In a little over six months, we're going to hit 100,000 at this rate if we keep it up by the end of the year. And I got a guy talking to me about um, wanting to get me to a million. Well, I'm game, but uh, I got to protect my own in the process. And my own is my blood family and my fish family. And they're the people I care about. And they're the people I'm supporting. I've, I've got, I shouldn't say this, but I'm gonna. I've got now six people who I'm paying to work for me. People who need the money, are not otherwise able to work, or at least not in ways that, that, that pay very much, who are, who are dedicated to working with me and helping me. And, uh, you know, my commitment is to them and to help them be able to do what they're doing for me. So the deal is, as this grows, their income grows as well. I mean, they're on the team and the team is covered. They're making a contribution. There are some other people I need. I need a good, a, a, a good, um, this, what's the word I want? Somebody who can do uh, online artwork, whatever that's called, um, who's quick and creative uh, and excited about fish. Just we're really up against it for that kind of skill right now. And we're putting together a book. Anybody who knows anything about doing that, we sure need some help. And there's not money available for everybody, but there's a little bit available for people who really need it. And I've got other volunteers who don't need it and won't take it. God bless them, because it's making it possible for me to help the people who do need it. So there's a lot going on behind the scenes here that uh, that I don't ever talk about, uh, that, and, but just give you a little a little bit of a glimmer. Anyway, we're over our limit here by a few minutes. We have a green laughing box from Donna. Uh, graphic artist. Da -da -da -da. Right, graphic artist. That's what I need, a graphic artist. And Ruse is an editor, I do. Yeah, come on over to Discord. All of this is happening on Discord. We've got private channels over there with all kinds of things going on. Come on over, introduce yourself, 
ask for me, ask for Tommy, ask for Laura, ask for uh, Jenny, um, ask for Maeve. Any of us will be able to help you. We'll get you in the system. Alfredo Goica. Hello, Alfredo. Let's see if I can give Alfredo a wrench before we go. Doopy doo. Doopy doo. 78. Well, we're losing the crowd here. Still got 78 people, though. That ain't bad. Browning Foam just joined Discord. <clears throat> Good night, Donna. Good night, everybody. Love you all. Wonderful to be here. Enjoy the two hours. I'm really feeling good. I feel like this is the first time in a long time. I've not been exhausted doing this. I've been able to keep my energy up. I hope you've appreciated it. I know I have. I uh, love you all. See you in. Uh, see you on Discord. See you in the videos. See you next week, right here, right back here, same time, same place. And God bless you all, and bye for now. <laughs>